We're going around town. Hey, Anna. Good morning. Yes, Larry. Charles Gates Doss is the great great grand, the grandson of Paul Revere. Nope. No. Nope. <laughs> the, William Dawes, who the, rode the, with Paul Revere. Who rode William with him, Dawes? Yeah. Who rode with Paul Revere. We had it all wrong. There you go. <laughs> That's why Eden is here with me. Because uh -huh. I wanted to pretend that when you emailed us that Natalie, my producer, and I knew what you were talking about. <laughs> <laughs> so when you get the email from Natalie, it's gonna sound like Natalie knew what you were talking uh -huh. about. Clearly we didn't. That's wah, right. wah. But anyway. The value of his mansion is what we're talking about today because it's a national landmark right uh, in Evanston in front of the lake. It is a beautiful property, two acres, and we are in the dining room. I do know that Charles Gates Doss was the vice president of the United States. You know a lot. <laughs> in the 1920s, 25, 26, yeah, around under there. Yeah, Coolidge. Perfect. Now tell me about this space we're okay, in. Okay, so we're in the dining room, which I think sort of exemplifies the house. It's yeah. very grand, right? We have a vaulted ceiling. Mm -hmm. The vaulted ceiling accommodates, get this, a musician's gallery. Oh. So you could have live music while you dine. Tiny musicians. Tiny <laughs> musicians, and I'll show you the stairs. Yeah, like a quartet maybe. Yes, and it's hot up there. Of course. <laughs> the paneling is gorgeous too. So the paneling's amazing. All obviously old growth wood. Um, the house is built so beautifully. You really couldn't do it today. Uh, many, you might enjoy the uh, quote on the above the buffet. May good digestion wait on appetite and health on both. Both. You got it. It's from Macbeth. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it's very appropriate here, as is the cornucopia motif mm -hmm. in the molded plaster on the ceiling. All right. Is this house open for the public to tour? Absolutely. So we're reservations only now mm -hmm. and masks required. Mm -hmm. uh, but we are open for tours Thursday, Friday, and Saturday afternoon. And you just need to go to our website, evanstonhistorycenter.org, to make a reservation. This house has 20-something rooms? 26. 26 rooms. Right. It is it, huge, but from the outside, it looks like it fits the neighborhood. It definitely fits the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. It's got a lot of property, as you mm -hmm. mentioned. The, what, what I think is really dramatic about the 26 rooms mm -hmm. is that the house, the scale is very grand, mm -hmm. but you don't always feel like you're no, in a huge No, no, like we walk in here into the library and it is massive, but you don't, it still feels, for lack of a word, Word, cozy. It, it feels like somebody's home. It definitely does, mm -hmm. and that's obviously very intentional. As you mm -hmm. pointed out, these are Dawes' furnishings. Original furniture. Uh, mm -hmm. Portraits are of his ancestors. So before you guys owned it at the M Evanston History Center, mm -hmm. who were the previous owners? So it's 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 not very many. The okay. man who built the home was a man named Robert Shepard. Mm -hmm. He sold it to Charles Gates Dawes and his wife, Caro. Okay. And Dawes made, it's a little complicated, but he donated the house to Northwestern okay. with the assumption it would be the Evanston History Center. Got it. And so that's, that's why you were able to preserve a lot of this furniture. And his, that, his will mm -hmm. dictated that his furnishings were left on the first floor. It's pretty unusual. We call it an intact interior. Wow. Meaning we actually have, these are the household furnishings of the Dawes. When we come back, we'll have more. And I promise, Larry, I will never try to one-up you when it comes to history. No, not at all. <laughs>